Um, as I said, the regard, regarding the final exam, when you come very close to the final exam, we'll cover the final exam in details. So we'll, we'll cover the final exam in details. And don't worry, there is a curve from the ACS people as well as I'll curve it. So I'm not letting my students uh, failing because of final exam. That's uh, some of the stuff we did not cover. Some stuff even in, not in the textbook. But they wanna test your, your response, how you respond to that. So don't worry about the final exam. Will be curved, that's all over the canvas is, is curved. So don't worry about the final exam. But anyway, so at least you have to adhere to the final exam uh, dates and time. We are not allowed to give the final exam before time, correct? You cannot come to one or two days for the exam, you want to take it because you have a trip, you know, holidays and wanna go to New York vacation. No, that's not work. We have to take it on time because of the security reason of the fine connected to the final exam. The final exam should be secure. So it has to be taken the same time, the same spot, and it will be secured. Now, let's look at the um let's look at this one here. Uh, this year, it's our, those are very pleased to, to see that out of 19 students, we have 14 students that really entered OWL, and this is very good. As, uh, you, can, you can divide if the class, the total 19, and we have 14. 14 divided by 19 multiplied by 100, I think over 80 something, 85%, which is very good. So we have only four uh, students some of whom they are still working on the on the glitches. Yeah, there are some glitches going on, but I think by uh, by next week, because after chap after two chapter we'll have a quiz. After two chapter we'll have a quiz. The last exam four will have three chapters together, correct? And I will give you a lot of ACS training and practice for the final exam. Final exam is twenty five percent, and uh, as I said. Well, I'm very pleased to show you the list. Your name is there, then we are pleased. So if your name among the four, so just let me know. I will can I can help you. We can contact the, the publisher direct. So other thing is to um, to share here is the questions themselves. What I put for you the questions here. If you look at this, the questions is uh, divided into all these. You know, the difficulties and everything. So if you look at those questions, it's not really a difficult question. See, the problem is uh, with the, as I said, back to the final exam, it gives you a few of concept exam. Those are mostly some of them concept, but the, me the major uh, stuff in the final exam is calculation based. So when it comes to calculation based, it eats up the time of the final exam. That's the problem we have through all this ACS exam which a lot of faculty, they don't live in, but we have to satisfy the uh, people from outside. They'll come to judge our program. They have to have some sort of statistics to compare it to the national standards. So they have to compare us to something. They have to have a database or baseline. So the baseline is the national average for chem, general chemistry one or principle one. And then whatever we are doing, they are using uh, ACS exam. So therefore, we can show the people uh, our average. If our average is very, very low, this accreditation called them Southern uh, Accreditation uh, Association, they can shut us uh, down with the principal. So they will not allow us to teach principal until we find the remedies for this. So that's very serious. That's the reason administration put a lot of pressure on the faculty. We have to have something in our hands, data to prove how our students are doing. So if you look at all those here, let me uh, try to get this. Uh, if you look at those, mo most of those here are concept-based uh, are uh, concept questions. <laughs> the question, I apologize, it's not Corona though, it's not COVID, no, it's just uh, cold. There is no heat. I measure the temperature of my body. What's the temperature of the body? You are chemists now. How much? 
98. Okay, we don't have the calculator to 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 convert. Although there is a question about conversion, there is conversion uh, stuff there. 98. How much is centigrade Celsius? 37. About 37. Somebody will ask you in the hospital. They have some some nurses. They know both. Uh, bless you. They uh, they have they know both system. They know the metric, and know the English. So they tell you ninety eight or thirty seven centigrade Celsius. So as I said, if you look at all those questions here, the first one, those are content based or concept based. Not that many. And as I said, the final exam, which we are really targeting this final exam, will be mostly, as we go in depth, you will see a lot of calculation. I put a lot of calculation for you. So, but the first one is mostly is a concept based. It's not really uh, difficult. So, yes, any question? Any question? So this one here, and let me just get out of this one here. Sometimes you have to tell the uh, the whole thing to. Uh, so I'm sharing this one here. This is the date of the final exam, so you are aware of this, correct? So just uh, this one here, and then we'll start chapter two. Any question about chapter one? Any question about chapter one? So chapter one, let me conclude. We had. And I think I have, I have uh, the, I showed you in an hour, we have scientific method, concept of scientific method, correct? Then we had, after the scientific method, we went further and look at the, uh, at the matter itself. And then we divide the matter into pure substance and elements. Then pure substance can come and combine themselves, make mixtures. Mixtures can be heterogeneous, heterogeneous uh, or heterogeneous. And then we went to phys uh, physical methods to separate those mixtures to their, to their original uh, pure substances. And then we went further to look at the uh, at the uh, 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 at the uh, significant figures, all the significant figures uh, rules and application. And then we went from there from significant figures determination and applications. We went through the density and then at the last were temperature. So those are the topic, the most topic, important topic of chapter one. Chapter two, we'll look into details about the, um, let me open this here. Share the. Uh, chapter two is, is looking in details here. It's looking into molecules and ions and the periodic table and the division of periodic table. Then we'll look how to name covalent compounds. What's the definition of co covalent compounds and what the definition of, of um, <clears throat> of ionic compounds, correct? Now, this is, again, there's another chapter which is really con concept-based. However, we have one small tiny calculations in it, which is, this calculation will cover the, um, the average atomic mass appears in the periodic table. So, let's start. Any other question you have? You want to ask you the question. Any question you have? Any question? Okay. So the uh, the uh, who is one or exam one will come after we finish chapter two, and they will come from whatever you are doing inside the hour. I base the most of the exams and the quizzes on the uh, online assignment. Because it has no, I mean, effect that you do the whole thing and you have no use of it. So your quizzes and exam will come from OWL. And OWL uh, questions, some of them even used by the ACS exam. But different wording, different numbers, correct? So those online 
questions, I will uh, Chem 101 active uh, web assign. All those are, are using um, using questions with with the database is is really taken by by ACS exam and just the numbers changing. So we'll talk about molecules and ions, but before that, we have to talk about the atoms, correct? So, so the atoms here start with the with the Greek, and then I think it's uh, transferred into the, the Egyptian pharaohs and the, Ch the old Chinese. So those those are the uh, people who are worked on the on the atoms. Anything and the Greek the idea is anything is very very tiny and cannot be broken in small pieces. That's an atom. So the word atom came from the, the Greek name, right? So it came out from the Greek name. So <clears throat> by the way, the Chinese came first through the history, then the pharaohs, Egyptians, and then the Greek. So the Greek is correct. Uh, uh, I mean, very close to us. To the to the modern time, not modern, but the Chinese are very very deep inside the history, and then followed by the Egyptian pharaohs, which is five thousand. The Chinese more than that, maybe ten thousand back in the history, and the the Greek is about because they they looked at the whatever the pharaohs did, so it's about five six six thousand. It was older than the. They came after, I mean, 4,000, maybe 3,000. But anyway, they, they, the idea of this is, is the atom is a small, tiny object or particle. This cannot be divided. You cannot break it. That's the whole thing about, about the Greek. And then it came out. And you can, you heard about this theory of the Greek said about the, uh, that's the, um, Matter is not what we define now. They look at the matter is made of fire, correct? Fire, air, and uh, water. So that's that cannot be really proven. And uh, it's just you know just uh, they were more philosophy than than science. But we are interested in our um, <coughs> in our um, modern. Uh, mission of chemistry, which started with Dalton's. Dalton's took all the stuff from the Greek and postulate, postulated a very nice, um, nice um, theory about the atom. However, he, um, he did not finish the postulate because he lacked at that time, the technology was not there and there is no experimental setup to prove his, his idea. So, so far he did very well when it comes then to to certain amount of the definition of atoms. He really could not because it's not his problem because at that time the technology was not there. Now we have the technology is there, so it had helped uh, to define the, the atoms in much, much, much better way. So one of the postulates, he said matter is composed of uh, small particles called atoms. That's he took this one from the Greek, correct? And an element, element is made of one atom or two or three or more. So that's good. That's very good. So, and this is characteristic for each element is made for certain amount of atom and the, <clears throat> the, the ratio between those atoms is different from one to the, to another. So, <clears throat> And the third postulate uh, that each element differ in properties from atoms of all other elements. So if I have an, two elements, you will see those two elements might not have the same physical properties, not even the chemical properties, right? Because you will see later on the content of their inside the nucleus number of the protons, number of uh, neutrons, and number of electrons outside the nucleus will give the physical and chemical properties of any atom, correct? So you will see that's the characteristic of an atom 
is within the atom itself, not from outside. And each element will have different number of protons, different number of electrons, different number of neutrons. So, <clears throat> and he is giving you an example here. Atoms are neither created or destroyed within a, within a physical or chemical change. They are not destroyed. They are still one unit. There is no half an atom. There is no quarter an atom. There is no fractional atom. There is none. What's happened is the rearrangement of the, those atoms during the, the physical or chemical change that leads to a new, new rearrangement, a new element, a new compound. Correct. That's what it, it means. So if I have here, give you an example. We have a, a copper, copper one oxide or copper two oxide. So you have a copper which is golden in looking, and you have oxygen you can't see, but if you put put them together, the copper will turn first greenish and then will turn black. So therefore, you see, this copper oxide is no longer uh, one metal. It's made of two metal, of two elements, not, not uh, one element, two elements made of copper and oxygen together. And it is, it is uh, copper two, it is black. So oxygen you cannot see. So we can't see oxygen from the air. <clears throat> The uh, Joseph Proust came up with the law called uh, law of different proportion or, or constant composition. And that's what I said in, in, um, in a change, a physical change, there is always co a composition is fixed. If you have a carbon dioxide made in the sun, right from the combustion in the sun, fusion or whatever reaction that might be, or CO2 coming out of any chimneys or from power points, carbon dioxide will stay as is, fixed composition. To one carbon to two oxygen. Wherever you go on this on this universe, carbon dioxide, one carbon to two oxygen. Right? That's what we mean, uh, fixed composition. And that's what has been seen <clears throat> in, in the nature. So we don't see that uh, the Copper dioxide here, correct, on the Earth is CO2, and maybe CO3 on some other planets or meteorites or stars. No, that's, that's not. So law of definite proportion or law of constant composition, and give you an example here. This is here, this is an example. Um, here's an example, you can look. So I took all those here, you have, 1.166 grams of, if you look at this one here, that's chlorine here to one gram of copper. And this is, this is, um, and this is one gram of copper. So we have two compounds. <clears throat> We have two different compounds, brown compound and green compound, correct? So you have uh, your green compound, it turns out to be when you calculate, it will be copper to uh, chlorine, correct? If you look at this, uh, copper to chlorine, this is copper one. Most of the compounds of copper one, oxidation number one is green. Most of the uh, oxidation number two will be brown or dark black. So copper will have its uh, charge with two. We'll, we'll talk about this. Always will be brown or will be black. Green always will be copper, um, copper one. So if you look at those data here, and if you look at the, uh, the ratio between those here and the green compound, correct? And if they, you take, this, this example is not correct then, but here it is then, um, I think they correct the, uh, let me see, show you here. Here it's much better how to, to solve this problem. This is, this is, um, this is an example here. Um, let me go for the, 
the first example, the calculation is correct, but the the uh, the, no, the the notes are not correct. Notes, and you will see it yourself when you look at the notes. So here we have compounds A and compounds B. Compound A has this is carbon here, and correct, and uh, we have. We have oxygen, correct? This is the ratio between between the number of grams of carbon to number of grams of, of uh, oxygen, correct? So um, this is carbon here. Carbon. This is this is oxygen. So get another one. Second compound will have this is oxygen. Have, this is um, carbon. So, and you have the ratio between them. You divide uh, by the biggest uh, number up, the lowest number down. When you divide, you get the ratio is. The ratio is one carbon to 1.13 uh, oxygen. So if you, um, then when you divide for the next one, you get this one here. So if you look at this, oops, if you look at this, carbon is back here. If you look at this, carbon is always kept carbon as one. It is. So if you have this one here, I don't know why it's not too real. I think carbon is one and oxygen is two. So if you look at the whole thing here, uh, this is oxygen here, oxygen, this is carbon. This is oxygen, this is carbon. Okay, so now, if you look at this ratio here and then you divide both compounds, you will get a ratio between them is one to two. It tells you that there is real compound looking like this. This is one to one. This is one to two. <laughs> so this is following the uh, multiple uh, fixed composition. So if I have CO2, carbon dioxide or I have carbon monoxide, CO1, so the ratio is one to one. That will not come in the final exam or in the quizzes or something, but at least you know, if you look at the fixed composition, we don't have any fraction. We have to get rid of the fraction. So here, this fraction, you should not get any fraction. That full ratio between the, uh, the, uh, the elements of both compounds. So you compare the first one, here with the second one is between one and two. So, as I said, it's just to show you this. This is the uh, this is the uh, the suffix composition with with some combination of elements. So. The next is to look at the technology that Dalton really um, did not have. This here is an X-ray cathode, and this is an evidence for this experiment and evidence for. Let me just have this one here. For electrons. This is an evidence for a negative charged particle inside within the atom is present. That's, uh, Dalton does not have this technology at that time. So the X-ray cathode is proven to us that there is a negative uh, particle inside the atom, which is, if you look here, we started 
putting a current, correct? And the cathode is always negative here. The, the anode is always positive. What's happened? And he put this one here, then this, this, is, this is the whole thing. He put the mag magnet. The south is, is your, uh, the south is your negative. The north is your positive. Right? So, so he saw that uh, there is, or, or the south here in this, in this experiment is, is the positive. Let me see. What's happened is the electrons will come out of this and will be attracted into the So here it is. The, uh, the electrons here, the high voltage, the electron will come in, will go through, will go through here, go through, and then we'll start the positive in the south here. There, the charge is already there. That's the positive. Can you see it here? What's happening to this thing? It does not take the Positive in the top, negative at the bottom. And then they will see that the electrons are attracted to a positive, to the positive side of the electromagnetic field. Can you see that? So the, the electrons are here. Here they are. I don't know what's happening to this. Does not want to, to draw. Well, it looks like really stuck. But anyway, so you can see that the the beam of electrons are attracted to the positive side of the of the uh, magnetic field. So we have this is uh, experiment has electromagnetic field because we start with electrical uh, current. And then you throw the electron current goes into uh, <coughs> into a blades. The blades self move off the atom. This current will go through the blades, and then the blades getting whatever atoms there will be stripped out of its electrons as beams. So those beams coming from the blades inside the magnet the magnetic field or electromagnetic field because you have a electrical current. So the current is helping to push, to brush out electrons of the atoms of the plate. And those atoms come in and they will be deflected. Correct? Deflected towards the positive side of the magnetic field. So they have to be negative charge. Otherwise, would not be attracted to the positive side. If they are the same uh, charge, they will rebel each other. So they will go the other way. There we go, but that's the, the proof for this experiment from Thompson. That's the the uh, the atoms of the blades here. They do have uh, negative particles called electron. It's a negative charge. So. Okay, so that's what it says there. Just look into this, the deflection of the uh, electron of the particles from the plate is uh, to the positive side, which is proven to be negative. Uh, you don't have to memorize all this. Just, just to let you know, that's how the, the whole thing developed to get into the, uh, the, uh, uh, the definition of the atom. So it went through all those experiments through the years, over 50, 60 years or more to get into the definition, which is the last one is Rutherford. We'll see his experiment, which is the last one. This is the best one. Then he, he took all the stuff, the work from the others. Then he developed another experiment and you'll see the picture of the whole thing. Uh, Millikan uh, measured the oil droplet charges of a compound 
organic compound, oily. So he measured the charges and then he had different drops from A to E and then he said, he have seen that this charge as a multiple uh, number like this number here. So it's like um, a charge every time appears, every time appears. So if any charge of any uh, oily compound will give you multiple of this number. So it's like a magic number. It turns out to be, this is the charge of electron. This is the charge of the electron itself. So you see this, all this, all this is supporting each other. Uh, <clears throat> Thompson, he, remember Thompson did with the, with the uh, cathode, remember X-ray cathode. He came with the model that's, that's the, uh, an atom looks like a cookie, correct? Looks like a cookie here, which has positive and negative charge. But you know, this is missing something. And this is not the whole idea. This is not the whole idea. What do you think is missing here in his, in his postulate about the, the structure of an atom? What do you think is missing? The neutrons, correct. So he did not even recognize there is the neutrons there without charge. So he looked at the X-ray cathode experiment. He proven to himself and to the others that there, there is a negative, there is positive charges inside the atom. And he came up with this cookie type of model, which is still, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. This all this science always start step by step, step by step. And you will see that the Rutherford type was building up all those if, all those given um, steps in one experiment, and we, he was at the end successful, successful to explain the atom itself. Um, a Japanese uh, scientist, he looked at the model differently, and he said there were like a certain um, uh, like atom. The atom looks like a like a certain then in the sense you have all this positive in the middle and those uh, negative charge is is surrounding which is very close now we are getting what closer and closer to the to the real thing again it's missing here what neutrons are missing Not, uh, the neutrons are missing but this picture here is very close closer than the cookie of uh, Thompson. so it's and here is the final work of Rutherford. Rutherford was honored, and one of the elements uh, you can see um, RU. So let's look at the RU there in the periodic table. Periodic table RU is Rutherford. Somebody can had spotted Rutherford. Rutherford is is within the uh, actinite and andonite, uh, lactonite and actinites, and he is honored. Most of those elements are, are, are carrying out the names of scientists. They have discovered or they have contributed to the area of chemistry and physics. So Rutherford came up with a good, excellent idea. So he has a lead box. This is, this is the lead box. So this protective cell, not to get uh, uh, radiation or cancer. So here it is. This is a lead, lead box. Inside the lid has an isotope that's radiate positive uh, positive radiation, which is like a protons, right? This radiation will come, go all through and hit a gold piece here. Very nice, like aluminum. See the aluminum uh, foil? This is iron foil, uh, this is gold foil. So why he took a uh, gold, as an example for his experiment. Somebody will tell me why? Some ideas? We will learn later on that we have noble gases, correct? Group number eight, noble gases, they are chemically inert. But we have metals, correct? Are chemically inert, they don't react. And those are there, silver, gold, and platinum, those three are inert, chemically inert. They, they don't, if you see in a cave, millions of years, 
that this cave have it has inside it gold. Millions of years, the gold is still intact. Does it change? No. But if you have a piece of iron, this iron will be rust, will be you know, will be gone. For example, or aluminum or any other element. But those three elements are resisting a change. They remain intact, and that's the reason he did not take any other element except gold. Other choice of his will be silver. Third choice will be platinum. They don't interact with with nothing, so they are very stable and chemically inert, so they don't get. So what's happened is this radiation will come and hit this uh, uh, gold foil. Then we have more than two options. Some of the uh, of the uh, radiation will be deflected this way here. Will be deflected this way. Most of the radiation will go through. Some of the radiation will be deflected the opposite way. Very few, few here. Few. This is the most here. Most. So, and he has like a, an X-ray film here. This is an X-ray film here. This is an X-ray film, you know, just show him the, the spots. All this is here, you see, all these spots here, all over the places are spots here. So this here, you'll see lots of spots. It's not shown, but you'll see most of the spots here, spots here, all these spots here. He took this film, processed it. He saw most of the, uh, of the aluminum, um, not aluminum, the, uh, the gold uh, foil. It's made of an empty space. I'm sorry. I was waiting. I was about this guy. I have to. I'm sorry. Just bear with me a little bit. I'll turn it off. I was waiting for a phone call. I'll turn it off. So I apologize. So anyway, um, <clears throat> most of the uh, the gold um, foil atoms are made of empty space. Why? Evidence for this? Because most of the radiation went through. Most of the uh, positive radiation went through. Very few, they bounce back to the other, the opposite side, to, to, to his side, to the side of the lead uh, container, correct? So it means what? It means for him, this is positive. He knows this is positive charge. Uh, isotope gives us uh, alpha radiation. And it's, it's coming back to, to him. That means it's hitting what? The same particle charge. So the, he called this one positron. Uh, uh, he called this one, not positron, he called this one proton. Positron will come back later on. Uh, rotons are particles inside the, the atom. That's when you put, hit them with the positive radiation, the radiation, positive radiation will bounce out because positive and positive, they are rebelling each other. Then he saw some few are reflecting the other side, correct? So it means that the inside the atom, something positive, that the radiation will come and be attracted to it. So three things he had seen. <coughs> but his is lacking what? Somebody will tell me it's lacking what? What? Neutrons, correct? Did he mention anything about the neutrons? No. So his postulate, which is the best ever best, that an atom is made of any atom, empty space, nothing, empty space. And this empty space in the middle of it is something has the biggest uh, mass, very tiny, but very, very heavy, made of protons. And the electrons are surrounding outside this nucleus, 
in the speed of light, zooming. Correct? Everyone's following. You have the picture of, of the atom. Okay, let me let me let me just make it smaller. So everybody has seen the movie called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Okay, so imagine that you are shrinking yourself in a submarine. Correct? Right? In this submarine, you you uh, go with the submarine subatomic care. So you'll be very tiny, you enter an atom. When you enter this atom, everything in front of you is dark. You will not see nothing except hissing like 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 a, a beehive. You hear the this is the electrons are moving with the speed of light. And you are in the middle, or you, you are like a blind, you can't see nothing. Everything dark, everything is empty. And then all of the sudden, you will come to the point when you center your, your, your submarine, subatomic submarine, of course, you hit something hard, you cannot enter it. That's your nucleus. And that's what it has, the protons and neutrons inside them. While the electrons are, are circulating, moving the speed of light around. Can, can you can, can you imagine this? And that's what really an atom. Atom is an empty space, nothing there. Except the nucleus, it has the most mass of the, the atom, and then the small tiny uh, small portion of electrons moving the speed of light around the nucleus, and they are almost massless. That's the reason they can move freely, easy. They can move. So if, if the protons will not move the same way as electrons move, correct? So that's the reason. So this is the postulate of Rutherford. <clears throat> Still, we have a problem with his uh, postulate. He did not mention that that the atom is missing what neutrons. Then other scientists came after him. He said, "Well." This is very nice. It looks very nice, the, uh, the idea and everything. But something is missing about the whole picture. Something is missing, which is the mass. If I add the mass of electrons and the protons, they don't come up with the practical experimental mass determined by the experiment. Something is missing. So therefore, then, um, this came in. And <coughs> and then came up with something called neutron. Why is neutron? Because neutron, there is a particle there inside the, the nucleus, has almost identical amount, identical mass of the, pro, of the protons, but has no charge. And therefore, the, the, the came the idea now, the whole picture is we have inside the nucleus, protons and neutrons. Protons are positive charged, neutrons, have no charge, right? And the, the electrons outside with the speed of light uh, running around the nucleus. So why those electrons are held without collapsing? Because there is always forces controlling their, their speed, their, their rotation or the spinning around the nucleus. There are negative charges and they are inside the nucleus. We have protons. Neutrons have no charge. A positive charge, positive and negative charge are neutralizing it themselves, correct? And the gravitational forces of the protons are pulling them so they will not run away out, correct? It's pulling them towards the center, towards the charge. So, <coughs> and this is what the postulate here, that's the, uh, the, the atoms is really empty space and the uh, nucleus is the most heavy part of the whole thing and it, it hosts both protons and neutrons. Neutrons are <clears throat> charges, they have, I mean, particles they have no charge. And here's the picture you can see. Uh, those are coming through, those are coming through here. Those are coming through that's proven this empty space. Majority of the radiation is coming through this empty space. Those are reflected here. Those are 
electron. Those are deflected the other side. Those are protons, positive charge. So the protons are P, positive charge. Electrons are E, negative charge. And this is the gold, uh, gold atoms. So, <clears throat> and for his work, he was honored and he was given uh, the uh, a name inside the uh, uh, periodic uh, table. Rutherford is honored <clears throat> with the name there. You will see a lot of uh, people are honored with their work inside, correct? So I think it's 104, around 104, the element has the 104. If you look at the 104, you will find it there. But <clears throat> it's not it's not mentioned here, but there. So anyway. Any question you have so far? And yes, as you can see, this is, as you can see, this is just concept. What we are doing, just concept. Now, <clears throat> as I said, he rather made uh, another uh, discovery or just this is a conclusion. He made the, the, the structure of atomic structure of hydrogen. Hydrogen has only one electron and one proton. Correct? <clears throat> one electron and one proton. <clears throat> Here, that's the scientist who came up by experiment and proven that something is missing called neutrons. Something is missing called neutrons. And the neutrons is given to the, let me see if it's here. And then the charge zero. So we have neutrons, and then we have this is neutrons, we have electrons, and we have protons. So protons positive, electron negative, and neutrons end with zero. Zero means zero charge is neutron. Correct? <clears throat> so they have the same, almost same mass of the um, of the uh, of electrons, a little bit heavier, a little but not that much, almost the same. If you look at the the whole thing here, uh, Friedrich he came with the neutrons because he worked on the determining the masses, the atomic masses or mass number of uh, of the elements, correct? So he came the there is missing something is missing. He call it uh, neutrons. Now, <clears throat> what happened is. That will give us to a new definition called isotope. Sorry, the isotope. Let me look at the isotope. The word isotope. Somebody will tell me what isotope is. Tell us isotope. Well, it turns out each element in nature, majority of them, they will have isotope. Correct. So not all of them, but at least up to nine, 19. If you go for 19, then you'll have a lot of isotopes. But there are a lot of isotopes all over the, the element periodic table. So isotope, the element can be found in nature, correct? With different modification. With what? Different modification. Why? It turns out to be electrons and protons are not changing in numbers. But in nature, you will see the same element will change its number of neutrons. If you have a number of neutrons are changing, you talk about this element having isotope. So isotopes is, is another modification of an element found in nature, the, not changing protons or electrons, but changing what? Neutrons, correct? So, and uh, it's very important to know that of 19, element 19, then you'll see uh, most of the elements will appear as isotopes. Now, in general, isotopes are 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 um, are not friendly because they can cause what radiation, and radiation can cause mutation of the cell and can can cause tumor and cancer. So, radiation because of the fact, especially those are the larger one, actinide and lanthanide, they have larger um, uh, mass. So they are not stable. So they'll start by themselves giving radiation without even doing you, you are not doing anything for them. 
they will radiate in nature. When they get radiation, guess what? And uh, it comes to the human body or animal body, it mutates the cell, creating a tumor, which it turn up to be uh, a cancer at the end. So, so that's what the isotope is always related to. Okay, so here it is just to tell you about the uh, that the modern atomic theory we talked about it as the atom is made of an empty space and all the mass of the atom is inside the nucleus. Nucleus means center, the center of the atom. The center of atom has protons, positive charge. It has neutrons, no charge, and the electrons are spinning outside the nucleus, right? With the speed of, of, of light. That's the, the picture of the whole, the whole, uh, the whole atom. So we included the, the charge. So here, just tell you, uh, just an example. If we expand the atom, so it will be like a football stadium. Then the nucleus will be looking like small, tiny, you know, a blueberry inside in the middle, uh, central line of the stadium. Correct. So that's just an example. You can imagine if you expand the atom and it's very big, and that's what the postulate. This is written by Rutherford in his notes. Look at his notes, real, real notes in the museum. He said, if we expand the atom, the atom will be looking at all city without spectator, without, I mean, players. The spectators are what? Are electrons. He said like this, the spectators are electrons watching. And in the middle central line uh, uh, is the, uh, the nucleus. It's just a small, tiny uh, piece of blueberry. So that, that's his note here. He wrote this one here. And you can see the, the, uh, the diameter of an atom. That's done by the experiment. So 10 minus 10 meter. Very, very tiny, small. So now, with this in mind, we uh, ask ourselves, now, how this uh, the the elements here inside the atom? How we measure their masses? Well, we turn out to be we measure their masses by by a unit called AMU, atomic mass unit. Atomic mass unit is based on carbon. It's one twelfth of the mass of carbon. So that's the atomic unit. Later on, you'll see. That's one AMU, one atomic mass unit, equal one gram per mole. One gram per what? Per mole. So it's not here yet, but later on you will see that's one AMU is equal one gram per, uh, per mole. There's another unit, but it's not really used that much, which is Dalton unit, which is um, equivalent to the AMU, but it's not used. We use AMU instead from uh, the DA, the Dalton, Dalton ones. Now, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, uh, the charge and the mass, you can see the mass of electron is 0 0.0091, three zeros, nine, one, 10 to minus 24 grams. So it will be, there is no normal balance will weigh this. You have to have a special uh, setup for this to weigh, to weigh this, correct? 10 to minus 24, that's, that's a lot. I mean, very, very tiny, very, very tiny. So the, the protons are much heavier, but not much heavier is 1.6 or say two, I said two grams, 10 to minus 24. So almost, I said the, the mass of electron almost massless, and the electrons and protons are twice, just as you learn this way, twice the mass of the, the electrons. So you can see how small tiny that really is. You look at the charge, the electrons has negative charge. You can see the negative charge here in front of the electrons. It is is negative. Here is positive. Um, it's the same identical charge, but 
but what's the difference is the negative and positive. Protons is positive charged, uh, electrons are negative charge. Neutrons have they have no charges at all, and you can see all this um, in the AMU is given to you. So we are taking we are taking out the um, you see mass in AMU and mass in grams. You can see the relationship between them. The relationship between AMU and uh, and grams it comes through the moles. One AMU is one gram per mole. And the mole is the ratio between mass over molar mass or atomic mass. So, any questions so far, guys? Any question? Okay, so until now we talk about concept. There's nothing calculation. The calculation will come <coughs> in the minute. So now if you look at the periodic table, each periodic table, I think I do have one here, periodic table. Oh. Periodic table, we can see let's look at the periodic table and then we can we can um. Sharing. Here, table. Okay, guys. If you look at the periodic table here, the periodic table is is uh, as I said, we can we can go through the uh, the powerpoints, but we can just show you that the periodic table will have the name of the element, the symbol of the element, correct, and its atomic mass, and its uh, Atomic number, and it will have a characteristic of chemical um, change or, or physical change within the group itself. Now let's look at this. The periodic table is divided into three major three uh, major um, groups. We have metals, correct? All these metals. We have non-metals. We have non we have metalloids. They are acting like, in some condition, like metal. In some condition, they are like non-metal. We call them metalloids, so mixed. So, and if you look at this, let me show you where the metals are. Metals are the majority of the elements, almost 85 plus. So here it is. All those are, correct? Actinide and lanthanide there on the bottom, I think. So here it is. All those are, and even this one here. All those, including all this stuff here. So everything that's uh, uh, that's metals. Okay. The nonmetals are the 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 green one. Those are. Tonium is a metal, let me take it out, here it is. Those are non-metal and the hydrogen is non-metal. Plutonium is, you can include plutonium as well. So, and those here, see it's different here a little bit. So then you have the stairs, the non-metal ones, the non the metalloids one. The metalloids one, if you look at this, let me get um, one. So start from here, see here. Oops. Here it is. Stairs, like it's stairs here, correct? So here it is. Silicon. Uh, antimony, 
particular. So it's like one, two, three, four, five. Those are those the the uh, the green at uh, the uh, it's given to you here the the color. So trying to do the color, but not all of them. The the blue one is not not metalloids. The metalloids they have unique number. There are about seven metalloids. So non metal metal and there is no metalloids here. Let me let me go and show you the the metalloids. And then we'll talk about, see here. Okay, so share this one here. Sharing. Here. Here, here. Now, if you look at this, it is, you can, you can, you can can't see them very well, but here they are. Can't see them very well, but anyway, so there are like stairs here. Why is not this one here? Is this one here. So the metalloids. So the metalloids. Uh, Comba are elements that they can behave either or. We can we can uh, get the table. Let me get out of sharing. Metalloid in periodic uh, periodic table. They are here, guys. Those are the metalloids. They are part of them. Is sharing? Yeah, we are sharing. There. There. So you can see those are metalloids. So what we different those the metals from non metals? Well, it turns out the metals are solids in general. Metals are solid in general. The nonmetals are gases in general. Are there exceptions? Yes, there are some exceptions. And the metalloids, they can be metal or not, uh, they can be nonmetals. Can be metals or nonmetals. So what's the difference between a metal or nonmetal? Well, the metal is comes a solid, shiny, correct? Cannot be compressed. If you compress a metal, we will break it. And it conducts electricity. The nonmetal, on the other hand, is compressible. You can make of this out of it liquid and solid, it's in gas phase. Then it does not conduct electricity. This is very important. Maybe not in the book, but key of metal nonmetal is the electricity conduction. Nonmetal non does not conduct electric electricity. Now the metalloid will have the same characteristic of both. But when it comes to conduction of electricity, it does conduct ele electricity to a certain amount. So the silicon chip inside your laptop or iPad or our phones, it does conduct electricity up to 12 volts. After that, it will destroy your, your phone, correct? You will destroy your phone or your laptop or iPad. So those, they conduct electricity, but to, to what? To a certain amount, not that much. The, uh, the metals conduct electricity 100%. So if I put my fingers inside the outlet, the power outlet, I will get barbecued, correct? I'll get barbecued, don't start laughing, but that's really true, we'll get barbecued. However, if you have uh, air and you, you put anything inside the air, nothing will happen. The air will not conduct electricity. Otherwise, if air, oxygen, made of oxygen, nitrogen, it can conduct electricity, then all of us will come walking like zombies, electrocuted, correct? We are not electrocuted, we walk normal, correct? So, gases in general or non metal, that's the key. 
they don't conduct electricity. Uh, the, I mean, the, met the non metals. The metals, they do conduct electric electricity. Now, the, the unique stuff here we have hydrogen because it has one electron to put it at the top of a metal. And that's misleading, but we have no other choice. We can have no place to put hydrogen because that's element number one, the periodic table. We have to honor this element by number one, put it there in the top of group number one, but it's not element, it's not metal. Hydrogen is non-metal. So then if you look at this, the metals themselves are defined, are defined into group number one, and I hope it will will allow me here. Yeah, we have we have time, we have time. Let me let me go. This is very interesting. You'll see. So here it is. Group number one, they have a name called what? Alkali metals. Alkali metals means it's an old uh, Egyptian uh, pharaoh's name. Alkali means they are making bases. They are what making bases. And even in there is old Egyptian uh, uh, city called Natron. So the Na called natrium. They call it sodium in English. But the OG usually come from the old Egyptian name, Natron, Natron village. So, and K came from the uh, Thallium. That's not the Pharaoh, not the Greek. That's, that's very modern. It came from the uh, Greek, I think, Thallium. It's very modern, Thallium. So you can see the name. So, second one, what we call the second one? Earth alkali. They earth alkali means find them in the soil. Earth means soil alkali. They make bases, but you find them there. I can take dirt, put those, those, those group inside my pocket, nothing will happen. But I cannot take the first group, put it in my pocket. I'll be turning into fire. They will ignite in my body. They're not stable. Sodium, potassium, does not stable. They ignite because they're asked with H2O to build spaces. Now, from here to here, guys, we call them transitional elements. Why transitional elements? Because they make very beautiful, colorful salts. So those are called transitional elements. Called what? Transitional elements. So these, they make a very nice color, uh, colorful uh, salt. Very nice, very nice colors. So you saw the glass, some glass looking, uh, some glasses. You look, uh, this is this is just transparent, but some of them blue, some of them green, some of them. Those are those are made of transitional transitional elements. So the group number, uh, this group here, it has no name, but it's called aluminum name because it carries out the first one, that's the element one, or the boron name. So this one is carbon group name. Now here we have some names. Here we have some, some other names here. Group number eight here, called inert gases, inert gases. And number seven here, fluorine and everything, called halogens. And Oxygen, sulfur, and all those called chalogen, chalogens, chalogens, halogens, correct? And then we call the other one inert gases. I'll stop here, guys. I'll meet you then Monday. We'll have a lab this time. I want to see my students in the lab. Don't forget, have a lab next Monday. Yeah?